Number 40. Some stove tops are smooth ceramic for easy cleaning. If the ceramic is 0.6 centimeters thick and heat conduction occurs through the same area and the same rate as computed in example 14.6, oh great, now I gotta go look that up. Uh, what is the temperature difference across it? And ceramic has the same thermal conductivity as glass. Okay, great. okay, great, I gotta look that up too. So after, uh, after an hour and a half of looking all this up, we find that the area here was given to us basically by knowing the radius. The rate of heat conduction is told to us in terms of the rate of evaporation for the problem that they're talking about. And then these two values we got to look up in the tables. That's just fine and dandy. So uh, basically, the first, first thing is we are trying, right, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the temperature difference across it. And this is a conduction problem. And therefore, this is the formula that we're going to use. Anytime you're dealing with conduction, there it is. So now, um, in terms of the numerator value here, actually... You know, just leave, I'm going to leave Q over T as, as just one unit for right now. Um, yeah, I was going to convert it to power, even though it is power, not converted. I mean, it is. Uh, I'm just going to leave a Q over T for this one. All right, so Q over T is equal to KA times then basically delta T, right? Because T2 minus T1 is just a change divided by the thickness. They're asking us for the temperature difference. So why don't we just do ourselves a favor? Let's just solve this, all right, for temperature difference. Bring the D out of the denominator, bring the K and A into the, uh, out of the numerator into, into the denominator on the other side. Just reorganize this a little bit, make it look pretty, and voila. There is our formula, okay? All right, so all I need to know, I need to know these pieces, okay? Now, basically, I want you to look, though, at this as kind of, remember, this was Q over T, and I want you to just keep that in mind. I want you to maybe just almost look at that as one unit, but we'll keep it separate for now. Okay, so do we know the thickness? Sure, they told us 0.6 centimeters. We got to convert that to meters. Easy. Did they tell us the K? Sure. After we looked it up, it's this value 0.84. That's great. Did they tell us the area? Well, they told us that it's going to be have a radius of this, and therefore we can calculate that area, right? But we also have to convert that into meters. That's fine. Did they tell us the uh, heat, the uh, heat energy or the time? No, right? So basically, this is what I'm after. Now, they told us this other piece of information, that the rate of evaporation from this pan is going to be one gram per second. So as soon as I start seeing evaporation and I start thinking about, well, heat energy associated with that, that is this formula up here on the top. All right. This formula here represents the heat energy gained or lost in a certain phase change process will be equal to the mass of the object that changed phase, multiply then by the latent heat of fusion or vaporization, depending upon what you're talking about. In this case, since we're talking about vaporization, we are using the heat of vaporization. This is a constant for water, all right? You might be saying, well, where's the water? You gotta go look back up at this example, right? Go find it in the text, go searching like a treasure hunt and figure out where that is. And so now basically what I realized is that they're, they're telling me now, uh, they're giving me essentially a rate of evaporation. Now, this can be a little confusing, but why don't we why don't we just separate these two units for the time being? Just just know that one gram, right, of there's water in this pan. I mean the pan is, you know, three uh, three dimensional, but you know, my my uh, you know Picasso abilities here are not very good. So uh, just pretend though that there's a gram of water vapor that is evaporating every second. Okay? Just just keep that in mind, okay? Now, instead of using this whole unit of a gram per second, I'm just going to use the numerator value and try to calculate then the heat associated with evaporating one gram. Okay, not one gram per second, but just one gram. All right. Why? Because there's no time in here. So I'm just trying to simplify it. I can do this another way too and divide both sides by time. And then whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. That might be easier. Um, to do, but I, I feel like mathematically it's easier, but maybe conceptually. I've explained it in the past that way, but I'm going to try a different way. Maybe it connects with someone. So basically, in order for me to solve for this Q, okay, I would now need to know the mass, okay? Now I said, work with the one gram. Though you know in chemistry, in physics, right, chemistry we use grams, right? But physics, we're going to use kilograms. You have to convert this into kilograms. So that's going to be 0 0.001. Just divide it by 1,000. And then take that mass and now multiply it by the latent heat of vaporization of water. So that's just looked up. That's 2256. Now, that's in kilojoules. Oh, so great. So we got to do another conversion, right? So just simply convert that now into joules, just so we have the units all consistent. So this should be about 2.2 million or so. 
And then let's do the math, okay? So this is 0 0.001 times 225000. And this works out to, I don't know, why did I need a calculator for that? I have no idea. Sometimes I don't even, I just go right to the calculator, right? Gotta love that calculator. So this is 22,250. Uh, and this is in joules, okay? Now just consider what I found. I found the heat necessary. This is the heat necessary to evaporate one gram, which is 0 0.00 kilograms of water. So if I'm evaporating this amount of mass per second, then I need this amount of energy per second, right? So I can basically say that this is equivalent to then 2250 joules per second. I kind of just put the seconds back. Right? It's like almost like doing a little conversion. I could have actually done this with dimensional analysis too. I mean, there's so many ways to do this. All right. Um, so anyway, this is the way I chose. So now here, notice the units. What are the units? And this should make sense, right? This is the amount of energy I need per second because this is the, this is the amount of mass per second that we are evaporating. So now that's why I suggested you keep this kind of in parentheses. Now notice there's an energy per time. That is the same thing as what I have in the parentheses here. So you actually do know that value, okay? So now we can just plug everything in. The thickness they told us is 0.6 centimeters, but we need that in terms of meters. So just take the 0 0.600 divided by 100. Now, the Q value, and again, you can look at this as two separate parts, okay? A numerator and a denominator. It's 2250 joules per how many seconds? Well, per one second, right? So now I can easily plug this in if you're confused about how to do that. Now I can easily plug this in. The 2250 would go with the Q. Then divided by now, the K, which was 0 0.84. The area, which was, oh great, we got to calculate that, right? So it's pi R squared, so it's going to be pi. Let me just move this over slightly. It's going to be pi times the radius, and the radius, but we need that in meters, so divide that by 100. I'm just going to do that in terms of moving the decimal squared. And then multiply that now by the time, right? The time, what was the time? Well, it was, again, one second. That's the whole point of this. And notice here how it gets set up beautifully, all right? So now we just have to plug this all in to the calculator. So let's do it. So point, so it's basically 0 0.6 over 100, then times 2250. Okay, now divided by parentheses 0 0.84 times then pi times then 0 0.14 squared. And we get about 261. So the temperature difference now is about 261 degrees Celsius. That will equal the change in temperature here for this problem. All right. Um, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if you can, help us out. We cannot do this without you. So we appreciate your viewership and your su subscription, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Your support uh, means a tremendous amount to us. All right. So we thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Take care.